in the previous two lectures we have discussed the properties of fourier transform fourier sine transform and fourier cosine transform and also we have discussed the application of these properties that if i know the fourier transform of a function using the properties of fourier transform i can find out the fourier transform of other complicated properties so let's discuss some more properties and the applications of those properties which we have not done the first one is fourier transform of x to the power n fx this is equals minus i to the power n dn d alpha n of f of alpha similarly fourier sine transform of x fx this is equals minus d d alpha of fourier cosine transform of alpha you see here in case of fourier trans sine transform it is becoming minus d d alpha of fourier cosine transform of alpha and fourier cosine transform of x fx this is equals d d alpha of fourier sine transform of alpha let's see the proof of the first one over here number 1 your f of alpha we you know it from the definition 1 by root 2 pi minus infinity to infinity fx into e power i alpha x into dx therefore from here if i have to do ddn of f alpha ddn d alpha n of f alpha this equals you can write down 1 by root 2 pi minus infinity to infinity this will be equals to fx into fx into not e power so each time you are making the derivative so at the nth time i am writing it directly it will be ix all to the power n into e power i alpha x into dx or in other sense this term i have written directly otherwise i have to show what is ddx of dd alpha of f, f alpha from there i have to show d square d alpha square since this type of thing we have done for the case of laplace transform so directly i am writing because internally you are making the derivative inside differentiation under the sign of integration cases so this i am writing fx after the nth derivative will be ix all to the power n into e power i alpha x into dx so i power n will go outside so it will be out i power n into root over 2 by pi minus infinity to infinity fx into e power fx into this will be x to the power n will be there into e power i alpha x into dx and this is equals to i power n into what is this 1 by root 2 pi minus infinity to infinity fx into x to the power n into i alpha x so what is your function if i assume this that this is my function say new function say gx which is equals fx into x to the power n then i can tell 1 by root 2 pi minus infinity to infinity this gx into e power i alpha x dx is nothing but the fourier transform of gx so this i can write down fourier transform of fx into x to the power n so i think it's clear fourier transform of fx into x to the power n this is equals to 1 by root 2 pi minus infinity to infinity fx into x to the power n into e power i alpha x into d alpha therefore fourier transform of fx x to the into x to the power n this is equals 1 by i to the power n into dn from here dn d alpha n of f of alpha and this i can write down i to the power n so this is minus i i can make it so minus i to the power n dn into d alpha n of f of alpha so basically i am getting the proof of this one that fourier transform of fx into x to the power n this 1 by i to the power n always i can write down minus 1 whole to the power n uh, into dn d, d, dn d alpha n of f of alpha so let's see quickly 
these three things we have to prove we are proving the first one i am starting with alpha f alpha equals this and dn d alpha n of f alpha if i make the derivative of this function n times then in the integral i will obtain i x to the power n into e power i alpha x this we can show it by making first d d alpha of f alpha is what then d square d alpha square so that thing i have skipped because we have shown it in the case of laplace transform so i power n i am bringing outside and once i am i, I power n i am bringing outside 1 by root 2 pi minus infinity to infinity this one is nothing but fourier transform of fx into x to the power n so once i am getting this one fourier transform of uh, x to the power n f alpha then i can write down fourier transform of x to the power n fx equals 1 by i to the power n dn d alpha n of f alpha and this i can write it as minus i to the power n dn d alpha n of f alpha this completes the proof of the first one let's see the proof of the second one now fourier i am starting with fourier cosine transform of alpha this we know that root over 2 by pi 0 to infinity fx into cos of alpha x into dx this we know from the definition that fourier cosine transform of alpha is root over 2 by pi 0 to infinity fx cos alpha x dx and once i have written this therefore what is your dd alpha of fourier cosine transform of alpha dd alpha of fourier cosine transform of alpha this is nothing but root over 2 pi pi 0 to infinity your dd alpha is there that is fx into dd alpha of cos of alpha x i can write down i can bring this under integration inside the integral sign so that if i integrate this if i differentiate this cos of alpha x is there so minus will come x f x into sin of alpha x dx and what is this this part is nothing but this integral is nothing but the fourier sine transform of x f x root over 2 by pi 0 to infinity x f x into sin of alpha x dx is the fourier sine transform of fourier uh, x f x so that we can write it as minus fourier sine transform of x into f x therefore i can write down fourier sine transform of x f x this is equals to minus this is equals minus d d alpha of fourier cosine transform of alpha so this completes the proof that fourier sine transform of x f x equals minus d d alpha of fourier cosine transform of alpha in the same fashion i can prove that fourier cosine transform of x f x this will be equals to minus will not be here d d alpha of fourier sine transform of alpha this we can write down so therefore this we have proved and on the same fashion we can prove this part also which you can check it of your own so let's again go back to this this already we have shown for the proof of the second part we starting with fourier cosine transform of alpha equals this integral from definition from here we are writing dd alpha of fourier cosine transform of alpha as this and this is equals minus root over 2 by pi 0 to infinity x f x sin alpha x which is nothing but again fourier sine transform of x f x so i am just writing minus fourier sine transform of x f x so we can tell fourier sine transform of x f x equals minus d d alpha of fourier cosine transform of alpha and similarly as i told the third proof you should do it of your own now let's see the next theorems F number one Fourier transform of f dash x that is derivative of a function. If I know Fourier transform of a function, 
then the derivative of the function Fourier transform of the derivative of the function can be expressed in terms of Fourier transform of that function. Again this is similar properties we have studied whenever we were doing the Laplace transform. So, the first one is Fourier transform of f dash x is equals to minus i alpha into Fourier transform of x if f x approaches 0 as x approaches plus minus infinity. Now, this particular condition is required whenever we will prove it we will tell why it is required this condition that as x approaches plus minus infinity f x approaches 0. Similarly, number 2 Fourier sine transform of f dash x equals minus alpha into Fourier cosine transform of alpha, where f x approaches 0 as x approaches infinity. This is obvious because for Fourier transform the interval is minus infinity to infinity, whereas for Fourier sine and Fourier cosine transform x approaches 0 to infinity. Similarly, for Fourier cosine transform of f dash x this will be equals to alpha Fourier sine transform of alpha minus root over 2 by pi f of 0 when f x approaches 0 as x approaches infinity and the double derivative also you have shown Fourier cosine transform of f double dash x equals that quantity Fourier sine transform of f double dash x is equals to the quantity of this one minus alpha square into Fourier sine transform of alpha plus alpha root over 2 by pi into f of 0. Here only one thing is there in the first three cases only f x approaches 0. So, whenever I am taking the second derivative then not only f x, but f x and its first derivative, but that is f dash x both should approach 0 whenever x approaches infinity. So, let us see the theorems proofs of the theorems one after another. So, the first we have to prove that Fourier transform of f dash x equals minus i alpha into f of alpha whenever f x approaches 0 as x approaches plus infinity or minus infinity. I am starting with the left hand side that is Fourier transform of f dash x equals 1 by root 2 pi minus infinity to infinity e power i alpha x into f dash x dx. This is equals 1 by root 2 pi minus infinity to infinity e power i alpha x into f dash x you can write down d of f x form d of f x into d x. So, that now I can take it one as the first function other one as the second function and I can use integration by part and I can integrate it by integration by parts. So, by integrating using integration by parts the first one will be e power i alpha x into d of f x was there. So, it will be simply f x where x will vary from minus infinity to plus infinity minus if I integrate this i alpha will come out i alpha minus infinity to infinity into f x into e power i alpha x into d x. And what I know? I know that f x approaches 0 as x approaches plus infinity or minus infinity this I know it. So, that this value will vanish. Now, you can understand that I need the value of f x at this point and if f x is 0 at x equals plus infinity or minus infinity then the first term will vanish and the second term will be i alpha into this is nothing but 1 by root 2 pi minus infinity to infinity f x e power i alpha x d x is nothing but Fourier transform of x f x and which I am writing f of alpha. So, f of alpha is nothing but Fourier transform of f x which is the quantity 1 by root 2 pi minus infinity to infinity f x into e power i alpha x into d x. And please note one thing here. So, this completes the proof 
that Fourier transform of f dash x this is equals to minus f of alpha minus i alpha into f of alpha. I am not giving the proof, but please note down this thing. Fourier transform of f n x nth derivative of the function. If I know the Fourier transform of f x, then Fourier transform of nth derivative I can show it simply minus i alpha whole to the power n into f of alpha. Obviously, if f f dash f double dash like this way if n minus 1 approaches 0 as is x approaches plus minus infinity. In the same way by induction I can prove this one you can try it of your own that Fourier transform of f n x equals minus i alpha whole to the power n into f of alpha where the condition is please note this one that f f dash f double dash up to f n minus 1 x approaches 0 whenever x approaches plus infinity or minus infinity. So, again let us see it quickly these things we had to prove and for the first proof I am starting with Fourier transform of f dash x in the integrand f dash x I am writing as d of f x so that I can use one as the first function and other one as the second function and I will use integration by parts using integration by parts I am getting these two things. The first integral uh, the limiting value of the first integrand will, g will be 0 because f x approaches 0 whenever x approaches plus infinity or minus infinity it is known to us. So, that is 0 and second integral is nothing but the minus i alpha into Fourier transform of f alpha f x. So, Fourier transform of f x which we are writing as capital f alpha from the definition we can write down. Therefore, this completes the proof that Fourier transform of f dash x equals minus i alpha into f of alpha. And on the same way we can prove that Fourier transform of f n x this is equals minus i alpha whole to the power n into f of alpha whenever f f dash f double dash f n minus 1 x approaches 0 as x approaches plus or minus infinity. Now, let us see the second one. Second one Fourier sine transform of f dash x on the same way we can approach root over 2 by pi into 0 to infinity. 0 to infinity f dash x into sin of alpha x dx and I can write it as root over 2 by pi 0 to infinity f dash x I will keep it as it is sorry sin of alpha x I am writing and f dash x is d of f x into d x use the integration by parts now root over 2 by pi into f x sin alpha x 0 to infinity minus alpha into 0 to infinity f x cos of alpha x into d x. So, the first part will vanish this part will be equals to 0 because f x approaches 0 as x approaches infinity and at 0 automatically it will be 0. So, this first value is 0. So, that I can write down minus alpha into root over 2 by pi 0 to infinity f x into cos of alpha x dx and this integral is known to us it is nothing but Fourier cosine transform of the function f x which we are writing as f c of alpha. So, this completes the proof that Fourier sine transform of f dash x this is equals minus alpha into Fourier cosine transform of alpha. On the same way the third one also you can prove it. This proof is Fourier sine transform of f dash x equals minus alpha into Fourier cosine transform of alpha. In the same way you can prove Fourier cosine transform of f dash x this is equals my alpha into 
Fourier sine transform of alpha minus root over 2 pi 2 by pi f of 0. Because I, I do not know the value of f 0. So, in the same fashion whatever way I have shown you can prove it of your own and you should do it of your own. Of course, here again your f x approaches 0 as x approaches infinity and for that reason here also this value was 0. So, again let us say quickly the second one that is Fourier sine transform of f dash x I am finding out. So, this is root over 2 by pi sin alpha x into d of f x. This I can break it into using integration by parts. The limiting value of the first term will be 0 because f x approaches 0 as x approaches infinity and second integral is nothing but Fourier cosine transform of the function f x and so this integral first term vanishes and second integral is nothing but this one. So, minus alpha into Fourier cosine transform of alpha which completes the proof that Fourier sine transform of f dash x equals this quantity. On the same way the third one we can prove it you can prove it of your own which is Fourier cosine transform of f dash x you can find that find out like that way. Let us see the proof of the fourth one that is Fourier cosine transform of f double dash x this is equals root over 2 by pi 0 to infinity f double dash x into cos of alpha x dx from the definition we can tell this one. So, this equals root over 2 by pi 0 to infinity cos of alpha x into d of f dash x into d x. Now, use again integration by parts over here. So, you can write down root over 2 by pi f dash x into cos of alpha x, x varies from 0 to infinity plus alpha into 0 to infinity f dash x into cos was there. So, it will be sin of alpha x into d x. So, therefore, this equals again the first part will vanish because we know this thing uh, not vanish fully vanish at infinity this will vanish because f x and f dash x approaches 0 as x approaches infinity, but at x equals 0 you will get a term. So, this is sin cos 0 is 1. So, you will get f dash 0. So, basically minus root over 2 by pi at 0 it is negative. So, minus root over 2 by pi f dash 0 plus alpha into this is nothing but again root over 2 by pi into 0 to infinity f dash x sin alpha x dx is nothing but Fourier sine transform of f dash x. So, that I can write down this is nothing but Fourier sine transform of f dash x. So, therefore, this equals minus root over 2 by pi f dash 0 plus alpha into Fourier sine transform of f dash x using the earlier property I can write down minus alpha into Fourier cosine transform of alpha. This the property we have proved just now. So, this is equals minus root over 2 by pi f dash 0 plus alpha into minus this value is equals to this thing. So, this if I write down minus this will be equals to minus alpha square into Fourier cosine transform of alpha minus root over 2 by pi f dash 0. So, this way I can tell that Fourier cosine transform of f double dash x equals minus alpha square into Fourier cosine transform of alpha minus root over 2 by pi f dash 0. And similarly, you can prove the fifth one also that is Fourier sine transform of f double dash x. This is equals to 
minus alpha square into Fourier sine transform of alpha plus alpha into root over 2 by pi into f 0. Here again f x and f dash x both approaches 0 as x approaches infinity. So, please note this thing that number 5 we can prove it, you can prove it of your own on the same fashion as we have proved the fourth one. So, let us see the fourth one Fourier cosine of f double dash x I am finding out which is root over 2 by pi 0 to infinity f double dash x into cos of alpha x dx and this I am writing d of f dash x. Now, I am integrating by parts we have already shown. So, we are getting minus root over 2 by pi alpha Fourier sine transform of f dash x and using the earlier property Fourier sine transform of f dash x is nothing but minus alpha into Fourier cosine transform of alpha. So, that this equals I can write down Fourier cosine transform of f double dash x is equals to minus alpha square into Fourier cosine transform of alpha minus root over 2 by pi into f dash 0. This completes the proof of the third one, fourth one and on the same fashion we can prove the fifth one also as I have mentioned earlier which you should do it of your own. The next theorem, the earlier theorem was on the differentiation of the uh, Fourier series of a function. If I know the Fourier, uh, if I know the Fourier transform of a function, then what should be the uh, what should be the Fourier transform of the differentiation of the functions that we were studying? Now we will start that if I know the Fourier transform of a function, if I integrate the function, then what should be the Fourier transform of that function? Here we are saying Fourier transform of a 2 x f x dx is equals to f of alpha by minus i alpha. So, let us see the proof of this one Fourier transform of a 2 x f x dx equals f of alpha by minus i alpha. I am assuming this thing let phi x equals a 2 x f x dx phi x equals a 2 x f x dx so that this implies phi dash x is nothing but it will be if you use differentiation under this you will obtain phi dash x this is equals to f x. So, that Fourier transform of phi dash x using the earlier properties I can write down minus i alpha into Fourier transform of phi x. This is equals again minus i alpha into Fourier transform of phi x is nothing but a 2 x phi x dx this sorry a 2 x not phi x, but this is f x dx phi x is a 2 x f x dx. Therefore, from here I can write down Fourier transform of a 2 x f x dx this is nothing but minus i alpha will go on that side. So, 1 by minus i alpha into Fourier transform of phi dash x and Fourier transform of phi dash x is nothing but minus i alpha into Fourier transform of this phi dash x is f x. So, my 1 by minus i alpha into Fourier transform of f x and this equals I can write down Fourier transform of f x is nothing but f alpha by minus i alpha which completes the proof that Fourier transform of a 2 x f x d x this is equals to the Fourier transform of f x divided by minus i alpha. Let us see it quickly. So, I have to prove this that Fourier transform of a 2 x f x d x equals f alpha by minus i alpha. So, I am assuming phi x is this so that your phi dash x is f x and now I am taking Fourier transform of phi dash x equals 
using the property minus i alpha into Fourier transform of phi x, which is equals to minus i alpha into Fourier transform of phi x is a 2 x f x dx. And so, I can tell Fourier transform of a 2 x f x dx minus i alpha by Fourier transform of phi dash x. Again, phi dash x is f x. So, I am replacing it and I got the result that Fourier transform of a 2 x f x dx equals Fourier transform of f x that is capital F of alpha minus i alpha. So, the if I know the Fourier transform of a function and if I integrate that function from some range a 2 x f x dx, then what will be the Fourier transform of that integration of the function that I can find out from this particular theorem.